Hey guys, it's Ben, and I'm going to go over Intro to Practical Machine Learning. Now this uh, series was actually designed for uh, students uh, for a volunteer project, but I think it's essential for a lot of people to know this um, uh, practically. Like, is, you know, when, they're, when, when students are going up, like in college, they don't really understand that um, you're not going to give a data set. Well, actually, you might not even know what data science is. Uh, but if you do are introduced to it, most of the time somebody's gonna be like hey here's this really good formatted <laughs> CSV file that never ever happens in real life so um, I want to show you how to get the data and then also how to organize it and then apply it to a machine learning model now I'm not gonna go into how to draw even more conclusions from the data um, because that's more data science and I'm doing practical machine learning um, if you want to do more data science, there's actually a lot of tutorials out there that show how to, like, say, um, we can fill in or drop uh, certain data points and whatnot. You, you want to clean your data, so like dropping undefined data. Uh, I'll go over a, a, a small bit of that, but not a terrible amount, because uh, there's many ways to attack it. So what we're going to do in here, we're going to scrape data from a website. We're going to apply K nearest neighbors, which is a machine learning uh, algorithm, and uh, you will ser serve those model predictions uh, using Python and Flask. So what that means is that somebody gives you data, they want you to perform a prediction on it, and you return that to them. Well, how do you automate that process with a machine learning model? So here's the curriculum. Like I said, uh, K nearest neighbors, data science overview, web scraping, create machine learning model, build your Python Flask application, and then uh, start using your machine learning service. All right, so the practical claim of this uh, is, well, how do you get your data? There is ways. It's given to you, like uh, let's say uh, Kaggle data set right here. Now let's go to this heart disease, right? So this, uh, Kaggle has a lot of cool data sets and it's really Awesome, and a lot of people love to use it. And data and Kaggle is really a great place. Like it's it's the most popular place to f find uh, just data sets you want to use. Um, and they have competitions. Uh, anyway, um, they have this heart.csv file. Now, this is cool and all, but somebody has to put this CSV file together for you to use. So how do you get that? They they have age, sex, chest pain type, this uh, serum, cholesterol, and this. Uh, okay, where are they getting this? They're actually going out and getting, and people are taking blood pressures, well, I guess cholesterol in this case, uh, 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 testing the blood sugar, uh, and well, this one's a weird variable, right? I mean, electrocardiographic result. Uh, they're getting all this information and recording it, and then somebody out there is like, okay, all this data is recorded, but then some people are like writing it wrong, or it's uh, you can't read it, or let's say they typed it in weird. Um, Somebody has to go in and clean it, and then uh, organize it and put it together. I mean, look, this is so nice already. Like, there's no wrong data. So that this is this is impractical because this is not this half this this is not even ninety percent of your work is going to be trying to make this data set. So uh, this is an intro. I'm going to show you how to get the basics of getting a data set and putting it together, uh, but I'm not going to show you the rest of the cleaning. All right. And okay, so. There's another one, so it's given, like people are taking it and organize it for you. You scrape it and then you organize it, manually catalog it, like I was saying, the people that are taking uh, uh, blood pressure and um, you know the electrocardiographic results and stuff. Um, uh, you, you pay someone to do it, like uh, mechanical uh, turn, mechanical turn, I forget, something, it doesn't matter, nobody uses it. Or if you do, it's kind of weird, because uh, it never really provides the right data. Uh, and so let's go. So this is uh, this is just this is the practical claim. Also, you're going to be using it into a Python Flask application. You're not just going to make a model and just sit there. You're going to make a model and then it's going to be used. All right. Hey guys, just wanted to uh, re-record this section uh, to better explain the KNN uh, algorithm that we're going to use. So this is so this KNN it means that uh, we have K, which is uh, how many spots, how many votes we want to take from our hist our data. So remember how we were talking about data, um, like that uh, heart disease. Well, let's 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 think about something else. Let's think about plants, right? And let's say these uh, these X's, 
are one type of plant and these circles are another type of plant. We could just say that this is a daisy and these are roses, right? And let's say that this is the length of the stem. So like as this grows, like let's say one inch, two inch, three inch, and uh, four inch, uh, whatever. And then we'll say this is how many petals, right? So let's say um, this X1, let's say like four inches up and like uh, five petals up. Uh, we can see that practically all of them are roses. Um, now, what if we have a data point that isn't labeled? What if we don't know if it's a rose or a, uh, I think I said daisy. Uh, so let's put, let's just put what we have in there. Let's say we have some, uh, some uh, plant and we say that it is three inches on the stem and it has, let's say five petals, right? So it's, let's say this is three inches and let's say five petals. And then actually let's say it right here, three inches and five petals so we can <laughs> reuse this star. Right, so if we have k as three, then we'll take three votes from surrounding data points, <clears throat> and we'll say that oh, this is a rose, this is a rose, this is a rose. So this pl plant that we didn't know that we ha just had right here, we can say it's a rose. Now, what if it was shorter and less petals? We would say okay, well here we have this small one. I really don't know what it is, and let's say it's two inches or or one and a half inches, and then it has like one or two petals, and we're say and let's let's assume that my cursor is the new data point and we'll just take the closest three uh, since our K is three. We'll say that one's one, that one's one, and that one's one. So both, all three of those are daisies. So we'll just say, oh, we got, it's a daisy, it's a daisy. So uh, that's how we classify something. And check this out. If Let's say we had a data point that where my cursor is and it sits right here. Um, you notice that it's closest to one uh, green and two red. Well, this is a majority vote type of thing. So it would classify it as a daisy because it's closer to two reds. Or might be, I don't know. <laughs> These two greens aren't they're pretty close, but I wouldn't just I want to say two reds. Uh, and, you know, so that is for classification. That's when you don't know what something is and you want to determine what it is uh, using some analysis. But there's a regression problem, right? Now, regression is where you don't know. Let's say you want to know what your estimated salary could be or um, like that's not really something you can say it is or isn't um, you know it's not a classification problem it is salary it isn't salary no you want to a range of salaries so that's regression so you're looking in between a range of things um, now regression in this sense is that if we have the total square feet and the housing price we're looking at how much our house is worth given the total square feet and housing prices of other data. So um, let's take a look at this again, right? So let's say we have, let's, we're gonna use this data point. We have this total square foot, which we have no idea what it is, uh, but we're just gonna assume that it's plotted correctly and the housing price right here. Now let's say other houses um, have the same, uh, that have similar square feet footage and housing prices. Uh, uh, they were uh, they were given these values, right? So if we plot something here, we can just take the average from the three uh, three closest uh, data points, and that's if k is three. We could say k equals five, and we take five data points on either one of these. So so k and n um, works for classification and regression, and that's how you do both of them. And uh, th that's basically all machine learning is is feeding it data. It learns some pattern or it takes it takes some information from surrounding data points or well not it doesn't even use the surrounding data points but it takes some information from data and then gives you back a result uh, a classification or a regression result all right just wanted to clear that up thanks for watching all right if you want to start along you want probably want to get the anaconda dis distribution which should be right here and I'm having trouble there we go. Cool. So Anaconda distribution, which is the world's most popular Python and R data science platform. You can see it comes with NumPy, SciPy. Uh, oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't know it came with that. But it, com it comes with Pandas. So we're going to be using Pandas a lot. TensorFlow is installed now, but we're not using that. That's for uh, uh, deep learning, neural networks. Um, and Scikit-Learn. We're going to be using Scikit-Learn, Pandas, and uh, for now, that's it. Oh, well, scientific libraries. Uh, Python, just get this Python 3.7 version and just don't use Python 2. It's no longer ever, it's not going to be supported for, well, 
it's going to be unsupported by the end of the year. So don't do that. All right, so you just install it and make sure that the path variable has been enabled. Uh, or, you know, just it'll do it for you. You have to opt out of it. Okay, so let's create a virtual environment. So um, you want to say, let's create uh, let's uh, create that virtual environment. Now, if you have Conda or Anaconda installed, you just say Conda create, then give it a name and say heart disease, right? Then um, you want to, if it's not activated, and or maybe you put down this tutorial and you went back somewhere, you need to activate again. So if you're on a Mac or Linux, you just say source activate heart disease because this is uh, known throughout your system. And on Windows, you just say activate heart disease. And boom, done. There's a reason for this. We don't want to clutter up our uh, environment with a billion libraries. So, so, what happens. so this is an interesting one. Most people would say don't, well actually most people would say scrape with Selenium. Um, Technically, it's a web testing, or it's a, um, it's a yeah, it's a browser automation tool, and it's normally used for user testing or web testing. Uh, now we're going to be using it to scrape because it controls the Chrome browser, and the Chrome browser has a JavaScript engine. So when something is developed or like dynamically added using JavaScript, the your Selenium is going to pick up on that, and that just makes it easier. And the reason I say that is because we will be going to uh, this website, right? So this is actually on my GitHub, uh, but you can see B2G devs at dot GitHub dot IO email intro. This is this is where you want to go, right? And then we're gonna get this heart disease. And like I said before, I've just taken, oh man, I have just taken this data set and I dispersed it through this website. You know, I'm actually going to just put that right here. So I've taken this data set right here, the age, sex, uh, chest pain type, and dispersed it here. So age, sex, chest pain type, pages, oh man, is that, it's still saying is a 63. I thought I changed that, but I guess not. <laughs> well, 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 we'll worry about that later. It, my mistake. I made mistakes. Um, Let's continue. So a CSS uh, selector, uh, it is a reference to an element on the page. For instance, if I go to this page right here and I just open up the developer tools, I pressed F12 by the way. Uh, if you don't know, if you can't do that, then you just go to more tools. Oh, not more tools, where the heck is it? Oh, it wasn't more tools, what am I saying? Uh, developer tools right here. Uh, control shift I I think or just click it so I'll just do control shift I cool all right so we're here so if you've never seen this before this is HTML uh, and HTML defines how a page will look right now see um, this body is gonna have all our main content nav bar let's go let, I'll show you I'm now selected a nav bar jumbotron which is this big thing but I want to select these because these have our information all this has our information so how do I get there like see oh this is this I can open it up and I can click on it well here's an even easier way you see this right here select an element on the page uh, in the page to inspect it select I'm like okay cool what else is sitting here well this is something all on its own every single one of these has something different right so I know that I want to get the patient's age right patient and I'm seeing the class right here is patient age and I'm seeing the class over here for this guy right here on the same one is patient sex, patient CP, patient uh, trust BPS. I really don't know, but um, look at that. That means that this age right here, sex, CP, trust BPS. That means I know that all, that all the classes start with patient. Well, I can assume that all the classes start with patient and end up with a dash, and um, have this one of these values as the end of it. All right, so if I go in here and I say Control F, right, I want to get all patient ages, right? Well, let's let's do it. So I'm in here, Control F, and I'll say dot, which means I'm wanting a class. Say patient, then I'll say age. Voila! I've now just selected 304. Watch this. So I'll go here just to, and now it goes to the next one. Say 37. Right, 41 was the next. So 41. So check that out. I am now selecting all the other ones. 
uh, all the other all the ages. And the same thing here. I'll say now I want to do six. Okay, cool. So we know that everything is like that, and we want we can just select every single one uh, using these uh, values and put uh, prefixing with patient and a, a dash symbol. All right, cool. So uh, now we're gonna go here. We're gonna go to our data collection. So let's start typing. Let's start doing some actual coding. All right. So I'm gonna let's create a new file. I'm already in a folder, by the way. So I'm gonna say uh, scrape, uh, scrape, and train. Five. That's what I'm gonna say. So if you don't have Selenium installed, that's okay. Oh man, I'm not using Conda, by the way. I'm just wanting other people to use Conda because it's just easier for everybody. Why is my terminal? All right, uh, I'm going to be using something different. Um, let's see. I need to say source because I'm using the bash source. Um, so without Conda, this is how you'd have to do it. I just don't use Conda because I like to have a lot of manual control over really everything. Now that the environment's uh, activated, we're just going to say pip install Selenium. Right, I already have my uh, Selenium installed, so it's all good. So I'm gonna say import Selenium. Uh, actually, I think I need to say web driver. Oops, one second. Cool. So I need to say from Selenium just to make sure that there's no problems. Import uh, web driver. Now, if you don't know what I'm doing, uh, what I'm saying is I need Selenium to uh, import this web driver so this driver can actually drive the Chrome browser, which is what we're going to be using. Now, I'm going to say I want the uh, driver to be driver uh, web driver dot Chrome. Come on, give me something. There we go. All right now, you see this executable path? If it doesn't find the correct uh, Chrome driver, then it's going to freak out. Uh, so we're just going to do this uh, right off the bat. We're gonna we're gonna make it scream at us, and it's probably going to fail. So I'm going to say Python scrape and train, and it's going to be like, oh, we can't use this because wrong version type probably. And there we go. See. Uh, Right, selenium com dot common exceptions session not created exception message whatever it just says Chrome version must be between seventy and thirty. So the library is not as up to date as the Chrome browser. So let's go, or it is, and it's just not supporting it. So let's go and do Chrome uh, driver download. Cool. And it said it had to be between seventy and seventy three. You can't use seventy three. You need to be between them. Uh, well, it, sh it should have been saying exclusive or inclusive. Uh, cool. So we're going to use this guy. Can we use that guy? Doesn't look like we can use him. We'll use this guy since it's our really our only option right now. So. Seven zip strapped here. All right. Now I'm going to just reveal this in the Explorer, um, and I'm just going to put this Chrome driver right inside of this folder, so you can see now it's uh, showing up in my editor. It's going to give it an uh, executable path, and since it's in the same folder, we don't have to go far. We just say Chrome driver.exe right uh, and that should be that let's see if it works boom it's launching is it staying launched and you can see Chrome is being controlled by automated test software cool we did it all right 
Now that's gonna be super annoying. Um, you can do some other things. Uh, for me, I'm gonna do this because I don't want. I don't like having it pop popping up. I'm gonna say uh, from Selenium dot uh, web driver dot uh, options. I believe from dot options import options. So this thing actually is just saying I want to have a set of options to pass to the web driver, and I still want it to work. Now headless means uh, don't open an actual interface, like just run run Chrome. I don't need to interact with it with buttons like it was before. So um, I'm going to say options uh, equals ops. So now if I uh, run this thing again you'll see that it's working see dev tools listening but uh, it was headless so it's just gonna run until it completes the application and it's not actually going to pop up something which is good for me all right so that's enough none of the uh, enough of the annoying stuff so let's get down to it now let's go to that web page actually um, probably should show you all uh, some more stuff before I continue on with this so I'm gonna say driver dot git, and we'll get um, wherever this is. Okay, right here. So B, remember uh, it's whatever HTTPS B2G devs dot GitHub dot IO ML intro, and then heart disease dot HTML. <laughs> long. So just wanna get rid of those. And now um, that's actually going to go to the uh, website. Now let me show you that. And now it's going to pop up the browser again because I took out the headless option. And you'll see that it says data at first, but then it switches. So that's how you switch uh, using this. Okay, cool beans. Now I want to say uh, at this thing, I want driver dot get. Uh, Elements, something's on there. No, driver dot find. Uh, I get so confused sometimes. Uh, find elements by class name. Oh no, by elements. Remember that elements because we want a lot more. Okay, so by class name. Remember what I was saying uh, before about this right here. Patient sex or say patient age is a class and we know this because if I take away this dot uh, I shouldn't find anything wow I'm finding stuff that's okay well I didn't know it would continue <laughs> that's interesting uh, anyway we're wanting patient age right now all right so let's go get those age elements and let's say, uh, I just want to say for uh, element in age elements, I want to print the element dot text. Right, now let's, let's see what happens. Oh man, this thing is gonna drive me nuts. Cool, you see all that? Got all the I'm getting all the elements. It'll stop. Don't worry. So I'm actually gonna put this stuff back because I really don't want to keep seeing the browser pop up. But notice nothing changed. But it definitely went and scraped every single bit of that. Okay. Now uh, here's something. This is just an integer, right? I mean, it's this is an integer, and we need it as an integer uh, when we're going to perform some numerical operations on it, like let's say plotting it on a data plot or a data point. We need something that's numerical. So let's convert this text uh, over to an integer. And uh, the cool thing is we know that every single one of these is going to be some type of numerical value. Only bad thing is this sucker right here, it's not an int. Um, and I will show you that later. Um, but since we know that we're gonna get the age and all that stuff, let, how, let's think of a way. Can we get more of these uh, objects? And the answer is yes, and we can get them all in one loop. 
So what if I want to get to, uh, let's, let's just do the next one. But I would recommend doing these in order like this because I made it that way so it's easier <laughs> for you. Uh, let's look at the sets, elements. All right, let's say driver.find uh, elements by class name. And let's go here and just, oh, not just, we don't want just X. We want patient X because that's the name. All right, now, if I'm doing this, I'm saying for every element in age element, print it out. But I can't just do this, I can't say this like, and uh, sex elements, like it doesn't make any sense. So what we actually have to do is we have to say for index or I, we'll just say I, uh, for I in the range of uh, the length of age elements, which they're all going to be the same length. Because if we think if we think about this, the only way this uh, this this uh, row right here, every single row has an age, and every single row has a sex uh, sex element and everything. So the number of age elements is equivalent to the number of uh, sex elements and so on. So we can just say, from the length of one of them, do this uh, for all of them. So we'll just say uh, for i in range of age elements. And these are actually in the lists, by the way. So we can just say age elements i. And then we just say dot text. Cool, right? Uh, let's see if that works. Uh, mind you uh, that I haven't already passed in this option, so you will not see the browser pop up. But it still works, cool. Uh, let's just cancel that. I don't really want to continue seeing all the prints. Okay, cool. Uh, now, can I also do this? Let's say here and just replace this with this. Yes. The answer is absolutely yes. And watch, I will not have an error for that. Well, I will have an error eventually. But I have that in there on purpose. And bam, now we've got the error. This is what I wanted to show you, right? So in this print of the sex elements, uh, we have an invalid literal int with base 10. And it's the, in, the invalid uh, value that I was saying, like this, um, you can't convert an undefined to an int. That's what it's saying. Wait, where did this undefined go? Didn't I just say that everything was fine? Well. Uh, I intentionally put in a mistake on this website because people make mistakes, we're human. We go all the way down here and you see here, there's nothing here and then they're undefined, undefined, everything's undefined, right? Uh, the reason being is that I have overshot uh, populating. And so we can, we don't need this information because there's nothing to get from it, undefined value. We can, we'll just get rid of this undefined stuff. So I will just say that it's the length of these elements minus one. Does that get rid of our stuff? I'm just, all I'm saying is that I want us to uh, go all the way down and minus this one. And bam, no more error. So we got rid of that. We just cleaned it up a little bit during our data collection process. It's normally never that easy. All right, so what we're saying is we can get all this stuff now, right? So uh, we need this in a format that we can use, right? We are in, we want this table format, right? Well, what we're doing right now, we're just printing stuff. So how, how what does a table have? Well, a table has some amount of rows across and some amount of rows down. So when we think of a data structure that we use, oh, we can use an array going across or an array going down. Uh, but in Python, we just like, and most people like to use lists. So we'll just use a list. Um, so let's say uh, the table, because we're going to create the table. And after that, we're going to say that we're going to put this in order, right? And so this table has, a, you know, is a list of other tables or other rows, my bad. 
So we're going to have to make a row. We're going to say row equals this, right? And now we're going to say row dot append. We're just going to move this guy in there. And we're just going to keep saying the same thing. Actually, what am I? Oops. I can just do it like that. And we'll say this is sec elements. Voila. Okay, cool. Now, at the very, we want to get all the elements, so let's just let's just do that. Um, uh, go over here and just look at all these things, and just you can see that we had age, sex, CP. I would recommend doing it in this order. Uh, I'm going to fast forward because I already have done this before. And what this is saying is we've just created one row, right? And so we have this, is this is our whole list. We've created one row. And now we need to add that row to our, our table, right? Table dot append the row. And that's all you do. So now we've made it. Now we have a two dimensional uh, list. Oopsies, why is that like that? Okay, we have two dimensional list now. Um, okay, now we don't wanna have it like this the whole time. Uh, you know what, I'll just, I'll just say print uh, table so you can see exactly what I'm talking about, like how much data we actually have now. But we're not gonna wanna keep it in the list. Oh yeah, the, actually that's a good, Thing I just showed. Okay, so this is actually why I did all this instead of copy and pasting. Um, invalid literal for int with base 10, which is 2.3. Okay, what this is saying is that it's a string value, and you were saying from the string value, convert it to it, what it's supposed to be, which uh, we are saying it's an int. Well, this is not an int. This is a float. And what is it for? It is for old peak. Old peak is a float, not an int. Therefore, it couldn't convert. And let's see. All right, so we have now scraped all the data. Now, this is the end of the scraping part portion. Uh, so check out the next video and then uh, continue on. Uh, okay, thanks.